Okay, when you're point shooting, sometimes people wonder, well, how do you know if you point shoot if you're actually aiming at center of mass or the heart or whatever? And what I typically do is I stick my hand out where this blanket is here. Just stick your hand straight out here where, where the heart would be, chest level. And then what you do is you draw. And when you draw, what you do is you make sure that you're on that target when you're drawing at any distance. And what that does is that forces you to aim within that kill zone, that heart zone right there, which is four inches by four inches. So every time I draw, when I point shoot, when you guys watch me, you may think, well, maybe he's not aiming at the chest or center of mass or the heart or whatever, but I am. Because what I'm doing is I'm using this 4x4 four four card where I can aim and I know if I'm aiming properly. Like right now I can't really see because my I don't have my glasses on where the sights are. But basically when I'm point shooting and coming out of the holster, I'm going right for that card right there. Making sure that that front sight is right within that zone. Now I'm not dressing up the front sight nice and pretty. I'm not taking it to a wedding, as Bill Allard would say. What I'm doing is I'm just making sure I can get that front sight on that target as quickly as I can without worrying too much about dressing it up for a wedding. So there is a time and a place for dressing up a front sight, but that first shot, you want to make sure you get that off. So I come out of the holster, and I've always got a target to aim at straight right there and notice notice over here I have a uh, paper target right there and there's the heart right there so basically what I'm doing with this this is close range this is close range where I'll aim right about here in this area and I'm aiming right at the heart here well actually more or less point shooting but I can see the front sight no matter what I do I got a flash front sight picture, which is what they call a flash front sight. So anyway, this one is the soft one. So notice, notice when I go like that, I can tell if I'm pushing into the center of this or not when I draw. So you see that one was off a little bit. So as you do this over and over again at close range, what it does is it makes you better at longer range because whatever you perfect at close range, you can start to work on at longer range and then perfect longer range and stuff like that. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you guys about point shooting. Because point shooting does work for some people, depending on the firearm, up to 7 to 10 yards. And that's the average uh, self-defense distance as far as private citizens is concerned or the private sector. So within them close distances, point shooting with one hand is possible to make a shot on target. And then follow-up shots, you can bring the left hand into the right and get that two-hand grip. Because there's no guarantee at close distances that you're going to be able to get two hands on the gun. You want to make sure that the right hand is able to use the firearm, not being uh, codependent on the left hand because your left hand might be getting somebody to safety, your left hand might have a cup of coffee in it or something else, and you don't want to go through that thing where you're trying to wait for this hand to meet the other hand to get a grip. Your grip should be independent with one hand, so that if this hand comes forward now, if I'm, if I'm out of the holster, I'm going forward. I'm not waiting for my left hand, okay? I'm not waiting for that left hand to come in and do a nice pretty group, you know, with the, you know, with the puzzle grip or whatever they call it, where you fill the piece of the puzzle. I'm not doing that. If I'm close range and I'm in an emergency, I'm going to use one hand and I'm going to come out like this. And then I'm going to use my left hand to block or to do whatever I have to do in addition with the revolver. And the revolver cannot be taken out of battery or at least not as easy as a semi-auto. So you can press in if you have limited penetration. Let's say that uh, 
I have a 38 special round that only penetrates 10 inches in like gel tests and stuff. Although I don't, abs I don't believe that gel test is an absolute, but it does give us an idea. But let's say I only got 10 inches with uh, the 90 grain FTX 38 special. Okay. I only get nine inches of penetration. Well, watch this. This is the guy's gut, right? Let's say that this is the guy's belly. Look at that. I, I just pushed him three or four inches right there. So now I've got my 12 inches because I pushed in. I pushed into the belly. So I, I have some extra inches that were taken up by doing that. So now I have less penetra pen I have less penetration to deal with because I'm compressing the tissue so that it goes in deeper before the shot is even fired. So that's what I'm talking about there. But enough said, I don't want to chase rabbits on another subject because I could probably talk about that one alone, just probably an hour for that one. But anyway, thanks for watching, you guys.